What's going on guys, it's the Bag of Tricks here. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm gonna be talking about what to expect on your first trip to a huge mountain, a real mountain, a real ski resort. If you're anything like me, you may have grown up riding small east coast, small midwest mountains, and you may have never been to a true, true mountain, a true ski resort, one of the big dogs in the country. And when you first show up, there's a lot of things that are gonna be different. And in this video, I wanna list those out for you. So number one, the runs are really long. Um, that should be pretty self-explanatory. You're going to a huge mountain with a lot of vertical drop, much bigger than what you're used to. What you're not gonna realize is how tired you're actually gonna get. When I go out west after skiing a whole season on the east coast, when I went out to Tahoe, my legs were not prepared, to be honest. So the best advice I can give you guys is to really exercise a lot, get to the gym, ride a stationary bike, ride a regular bike, run on a treadmill, do some leg press, do some squats, you know, get yourself in shape and prepared for that because these runs are long. You're gonna be on a run for 20 to 30 minutes possibly, and you don't really realize how brutal that is, how tiring that is until you get there. So be aware of that. The next thing that kind of coincides with that is the run difficulty is accurate. A blue square is actually an intermediate trail at these mountains. If you're used to East Coast, mini mountain, molehill mountain, blue squares, um, you're gonna be in for quite a shock if you get out west and go on one of their blue squares. They're actually pretty difficult, they're steep, they're long like I said, and the speed at which you can get up to because of how long and how steep these trails are out there is pretty insane. Like you really notice how fast you're going. When you're at my mountain, Peak and Peak, if you bomb it straight straight you're still not even gonna get close to how fast you can get out on these big mountains. So a black diamond is actually an expert trail. A green circle is gonna be, you know, your beginner trail. Blue square is gonna be intermediate. It's gonna be difficult. It's not gonna be what you're used to. So be aware of that. Most times you're gonna be going to these mountains with a group of friends. And this is where point number three comes in. Remember how large these places actually are. Like they are giant pieces of land. And it's very easy because you're new there. You don't know where the trails meet up you don't know if you take a right here where that trail goes versus if you take a left you may get spread out from your group of friends during a run and it gets confusing because you're so new to these places so always have a phone always have some way to communicate with your friends uh, make sure you have a spot to meet up at, at a certain time if you get lost and nobody has a phone just be aware that it's very easy to get lost in these places because you're new there and they're huge so if you're going with a group of friends just have a plan b a backup plan to re me. You don't want to lose somebody for an entire day on a trip like this. You're supposed to go there to have fun with your friends, right? So make sure that you have ways to stay connected no matter what happens. To add on to that, there's a ton of variety at these mountains, but they're so large that if you want to see it all, you're really going to have to ski for more than one day. To tack on to that, these mountains generally close at 4 p.m. So if you're used to skiing and on the East Coast, unless you're in Vermont, most mountains here stay open until 9, 10 p.m. depending on where you're at or what day it is. Uh, because we have lights but at these huge mountains they don't have lights so if you want to really explore everything a mountain has to offer you should probably ski here for more than a day now when we went out to tahoe we spent one day at three different mountains because we knew we wanted to experience just different views different terrain and stuff like that but if we really wanted to enjoy each resort individually we probably should have skied them each for two days i would say so be aware that there's a ton of stuff to do at these places so only going for a day at a time may not be the best idea. And also, again, they only stay open till four. That's a big change from what you're used to on the East Coast or a, a small mountain in the Midwest. So you don't have as much time. You gotta really pump in as many runs as you can. And like I said, I would suggest more than one day and really plan out what you wanna see, you know, the points of interest that you really wanna see when you go there, the runs you really wanna do. You know, plan all this in advance, but give yourself enough time to really enjoy it. And finally, be aware that the weather can get absolutely insane in these areas. I know when I go to Killington, Vermont, it's like a 50-50 chance if it's going to be brutally cold. Uh, when you go out to out west, you could get stuck in a crazy snowstorm, and it's just the, the elements are much more pronounced when you're that high up on these mountains. I mean, little mountains that we ride on the east coast, midwest, you're not going to get crazy gusts of wind on them generally because of how low they are, you know. But when you're exposed way up on these mountains, man, the weather can get crazy. Now, with that being said, the weather can also be amazing. The snow is generally amazing. But just be aware that it can get nasty. Uh, Vermont has been, Killington has been nasty a lot of times when I go there. Like, negative 20 degrees wind chill. Absolutely insane. So be prepared for that. Make sure to look at the forecast ahead of time and just have a good idea 
of what you're getting yourself into, but don't let that scare you away because with that comes amazing snow conditions. At your small mountain, you're probably skiing man-made snow, you're probably skiing ice, and when you go to these mountains, you're gonna be in for a treat because the conditions are always so good. And even on a bad day at a real mountain, it's gonna be a good day at your home resort. So there it is guys, a list of things you should expect when you go to a real mountain for the first time. I really want you to go into that and have fun. It's an amazing experience. I absolutely love going on ski trips to new mountains and experiencing everything they have to offer. Get ready for amazing views, amazing conditions, amazing people, an experience unlike anything else. I mean, it's amazing. I highly suggest it. I hope all of you can get out and get to a real mountain this winter, next winter, within the next few years if you've never been out there. But uh, do remember that there are th major differences between what you're used to on a small, tiny molehill compared to these bad boys. So thanks for watching. If this helps you, leave a like, leave a comment, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video, guys. Peace.